Welcome to the Brass and Woodwind Shop. This French horn was sent to me from Georgia, and the owner of it said that there were problems with the valves. The valves were very loose and leaky. I'm going to be working on this horn over the next few weeks. During this video, I probably will not make it much farther than just diagnosing what the problem is. This horn was made by Richard Wunderlich approximately 100 years ago. Rotor valves can get very loose on old horns, and that is the problem with this horn. But he does not want to spend the money on getting the valves replated and refit. So he wants me to see if there's anything I can do that's less expensive than a full valve job. But it will help tighten up the valves and make them not leak as much. The owner of this instrument loves the way it plays, but he just wants the valves tighter. Right now he's using some very heavy oil on it, and it is quieting the valves down a lot. If I push down the valves, they are very quiet. You cannot hear a lot of noise, and that is good, but that is because of the oil. There's very heavy oil on the valves that is quieting them down. But the problem is when the oil wears off, which it does do, then the valves get noisy and they get leaky and they make the instrument not sound as good. Because the player of this instrument says he loves the way it plays as it is, I want to do as little as I can to affect the sound. And sometimes if you do a valve job to an instrument, it can affect the sound. And I do not want to do that. I want this instrument to go back to the player and sound just as good or better than it does now. It is very hard to do a valve job on a rotary valve, and that's mostly because the valves are tapered. So they have to do each valve by hand, and it takes a very long time. So to do a valve job on this instrument in US dollars would probably be around $1,200 to about $2,000. That is a lot of money to spend. My customer wants to spend about one third of that amount, so I'm gonna see if I can do this job inexpensively, but also do a good job of it. And I also want to make this instrument sound better and not worse when he gets it back. Trumpet is my main instrument, but French horn is my second instrument. However, it's a distant second. But I'm going to make a little noise on this to show you what it sounds like right now. I admit that I am not an expert French horn player, but to me it does sound a little bit stuffy, and I think that may be because of the loose valves. And also I did notice a slight buzz in a couple of the notes, and I'm thinking that that buzz may have something to do with the bell rim. There is a large crack in the bell rim, and that may be vibrating when I play it. I'm not sure that's what it is. It may be something else, and it's possible it could be the valves vibrating a little bit in there too. Now I'm going to take a look at all the valves and see what we're working with. I am going to take the rotors apart, but before I do that, I want to check out a few things. First of all, I want to check compression, and they do make machines that can check compression, but an easier way to do it is to pull the side out and listen for The valve lever needs to be up, because then the rotor closes off this circuit here. So what you're doing is testing for leakage in between the face of the rotor and the casing. If there's a leak anywhere else in the tubing, it will lose compression too. Like if there's a crack in the tubing, or if there's a leak in one of the solder joints, or also in between the inner side tubing and the outer side tubing. But usually most of the leakage comes from between the face of the valve and the casing. So I'm going to pull this out and listen for the pop. See there's a very little pop to that. If I pull it out faster, it might pop a little more. Okay, it did pop, but I had to pull it out fast. It should have a pop, even if you pull it out slowly, but this does not. So this has very bad compression. I'm also going to check to see if there are leaks anywhere in the first slide. I'm going to clean that off. I'm going to cover up one tube with my finger, and then blow on the other one, and see if there's any leakage in the slide itself. Okay, I just blew on it and there's no leakage in the slide, so the leakage is probably in the valve. And I'm also going to pull out the other side. Okay, that is also very bad compression. Now I'm going to check the second valve. That sounds like equally bad. Yeah, very little pop to it. Okay, very little pop to that one. Now I'm going to check the levers. Oh yeah, there's a lot of slop in that lever. It should be a lot tighter than that. They've probably worn down over the years, so I'm going to fix that too later, but I'm not going to do that now. Now I'm going to turn it over and check the valves. There are two ways that rotor valves can be loose. They can be loose going up and down, and they can also be loose going sideways. To check if they're loose going up and down, you just pull up and down on the valve, and then you listen. Listen to that. 
The sound that you hear is the air leaking through the spindles. It's leaking through the heavy oil and that's what's making that funny sound. To check to see if they're loose going back and forth, you just move the valve back and forth. And it does go back and forth. And that's no surprise there. You can see the valve going up and down, and it's going up and down a lot, not just a little bit. So everywhere on these valves that can be loose is loose. And now I'm going to take it apart and figure out how loose they are. If there is one good thing about loose valves, they do usually work pretty well. The second valve does have a little catch on it, about right there, but it has nothing to do with the metal. The reason why is the lever is a little too close to the stop arm and the string. When you push it down, the string gets caught in between this screw and the other screw there and it kind of clicks. That could be solved by bending the lever arm away a little bit, but remember the rotor arms are so loose that it's just going to flop around in there. So I'm not going to bend that yet. I'm going to tighten up the levers first before I do any adjusting of them. Now I'm going to take off all the strings. These are new strings, but they still need to come off in order for me to work on them. To get the strings off, you just need to loosen up two screws, the one on the lever and then the other one on the stop arm. Now all I need to do to get the rotor out is loosen up the stop arm screw. And then I'm going to tap on it. And that loosened up the rotor plate, so the rotor plate is off. And now I'm going to take the screw out the rest of the way. Then I have a little tool to tap out the rotor the rest of the way. That popped off the stop arm, so now the rotor can come out. So I'm going to push that out. The valve has a lot of fairly deep gouges in there. I'll try to hold it to the light there. Now you can see that. And then there's another one right there. And that's where the, it's not just discolored. That's where the metal is gone. It has a gouge in it. So I can tell that these valves have been very, very worn down over the years. And it does look like they have been silver plated. That looks like silver plating in there. It looks like it was copper plated and then silver plated over the copper plate. And this is funny. I don't know what this is. I don't, I've never seen this before. Look close to see this. Right at the end of the valve, there is like a little piece of brass. It looks like it's soldered on to the end of the spindle. I do not know why they put that there, but there it is. It almost looks like the valve is made out of copper. Maybe it's not copper plated. Maybe it, the valve is made out of a high content of copper. Brass is made out of copper and zinc, and if you put a higher copper content, it looks more reddish like this is. And if you put more zinc in it, it has the brass color like brass instruments are. So I'm thinking that the valve... Huh. Oh, another thing I just noticed... Right here, it looks like there's like a little ring around here, and then in between, there is, you probably cannot see this on the video, but right there, it looks like there is some copper color, and I'm wondering if these valves were actually two pieces and then brazed together. That's what it looks like, because right around the whole valve is like a ring, and that's right where the gouge is right there. So I'm thinking that these valves are probably two pieces and then soldered together. I'm wondering if they took two single horn rotors and cut off the top on one, the bottom on the other, and then put them together and soldered them to make a double horn rotor. I'm not really sure about that. I have never seen this before. And also I don't know if that little brass piece they put on there was done that way by uh, Richard Wunderlich or if it was done later by a repair technician. I'm going to pull out the other valves and see if it's the same thing or not. Here's the second valve. I'm taking the oil off so that I can see what's going on better because it's a lot easier to tell if there is no oil on there. Okay, this does have the line that goes around it too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that those were soldered together, two parts of the valve. Or actually, it was probably brazed rather than soldered. And right there, it also has the piece of brass soldered on. 
I'm also looking inside of the rotor where it would have been drilled out and then threaded and it does have the copper color to it so I don't think the copper color is plating I think that's the actual color of the valve and then I think that the silver plating was put on top of that but most of the silver plating has been worn off over the years this is the fourth valve, and this is kind of interesting. There is the brass color on this valve, and then there's the copper color here. But, but the copper color is more copper colored than this one. This one is more orangish, and this is more red, like the copper color. So I'm thinking that the fourth valve is uh, brass, because there's brass right there, and also on top. I'm thinking there's brass and then there's copper plating on top of the brass on this valve and there's no seam in the middle of this valve so I'm thinking that these valves were made out of different things now why they did it that way I do not know exactly but that's what it looks like and also another thing I noticed there's a crack on the end of the spindle it probably will not make any difference because once you put the stop arm on there it's going to hold everything together so it should be fine I don't think that's going to matter at all I cleaned up all the oil now I can measure the gap between the face of the valve and the casing I have a feeler gauge and usually I use this for repadding flutes and clarinets but I can also use it for this Okay. Oh yeah, it fits in there with no problem, so it's, the gap is wider than this. And what this is, is part of a cassette tape. I have another part of a cassette tape, and I'm going to double that over and see if two of those will fit in there. Now it is two layers thick, I'm going to put that in there. Oh yeah, it still fits in there with no problem. Now I'm going to double it over again, so it's four layers thick. Now it's four layers thick, and I'll see if it still fits in there or not. Okay, it is, it is tight now, so it's probably about three layers thick. I'm going to take one of these away. Now I'll try three layers. Okay, yeah, it does fit in there now. It's kind of tight, so it's about three layers thick. Now I'm going to measure this with my micrometer to see how thick it is. Looks like about five thousandths of an inch thick. So there's five thousandths of an inch gap here. And that might not sound like much, but that is actually a very large gap for instruments because a lot of air can leak out of that five thousandths of an inch. Of course, there was heavy oil on it, which made it not leak as much. Now I'm going to try this valve. The second valve also is three layers thick, so that is another five thousandths of an inch. And when you go through four valves, the effect is cumulative too. Okay, about the same on this one, another five thousandths of an inch. Now the fourth valve. Let's see what that is. Okay, about the same here too. So we have about a five thousandths of an inch gap on each of the four valves. Now I'm going to check the gap on the rotor plate. This is quite a big gap because you can tilt it that much. And if you go back and forth, you can see it move. And that's a pretty big gap on that one. This is the second valve. This one's even worse. That's really bad. Look at that. So there's a lot of work to do on this also. I do have a tool though that will fix the gap between the rotor plate and the spindle on the rotor. I'm going to use that tool in another video. But right now I'm just going to diagnose the problem. Yeah, same thing on this. A huge gap. Now I'm going to check the gap on the spindle. So I'll put that in. And then I'm going to look at the gap right there. This gap is smaller, but it still is a fairly large gap. The tool that I told you about that will work on the rotor plate will also work on the casing. So I'm going to use that tool on this also. I put the horn back together and I'm going to play it again. The only difference this time is that I took off all of the oil off of the valves. In case if you're wondering, it will not hurt it to play it with no oil for just a minute. Listen to the difference in the sound with no oil. Now I'm going to play it in the lower register, and the lower register is affected a lot more by leaks. That sounds terrible. The lowest note is almost unplayable because it's so leaky. 
Without the oil, this French horn plays terribly, and I would say it is virtually useless like it is. When you play French horn, you need to be able to attack the center of the note, and with this, I'm going to say it's almost impossible to do that. <laughs> And also it's extremely out of tune. There's a huge difference how this horn plays with or without oil. And that's because the oil stops most of the leaks. And also the valves are a lot noisier because the oil does not quiet them down when they move around inside of the casings. Now there's just one thing left and that's to take off the levers. These levers need attention also. If I put the hinge rod in here, you can see that it is extremely loose. There's a huge gap in there also. What I'm going to do to fix that is either get a larger rod or I may put an insert inside of there that will fit this hinge rod. I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to do one or the other because it's not good to have these levers move around when you're playing the instrument. In closing, what I'm going to need to do to make this horn play better is tighten the gap between the bearing plate and the spindle, and then tighten the gap between the spindle and the bearing in the casing. And then I'm also going to have to tighten the gap inside of the casing as it goes up and down like that. And also I'm going to have to tighten the gap on the levers. And I'm also going to need to tighten the gap between the face of the valve and the casing. Those are five different things I'm going to need to tighten on four different valves. So that's 20 different things I need to address on just the valves on this instrument. But those will be for other videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos. And also look in the description below for links to related videos.